Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a preset tutorial to talk about uh, various functions to improve uh, your performance when you're working with geometry nodes instances. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender. As always, you can download all these presets for free from the link in the description. And uh, this is a pretty standard uh, setup uh, for instancing geometry nodes where I start with a grid. This is a procedural grid, so you can increase or decrease the size of it. I'm distribute points on it. And then I'm instancing a collection of models on it. There are three models inside of this collection. So you need to separate the children and the reset children or whatever. And you are also going to pick one of these three models for each point so that you have a nice scene. I put a random rotation node to give it a random rotation. Otherwise, they are all looking at the same angles. OK, so this is nice. And if you want to give it kind of random scales, you can take a randomness node and plug that into the scale. Let's increase the scale a little bit so that the sunflowers are bigger, some flowers are smaller. And you can change the seed. So that's just to give it kind of different choices. These two random nodes are basically built upon this random value node. The key point of randomness is that instead of treating minimum and maximum separately, I have an average value to control the general scale of my instances. And most of the time, I do not need to touch these variances. But as you may imagine from the name, if I change the variance to zero, then no matter how I change the seed, there is no randomness for my instances. And if I recover that, then I have these kind of variances. You can change the variances relative to average. You can also change different modes for absolute variances or there are only variances matters for this value and so on. Okay, so basically this is the key point of this randomness node. The random rotation node is basically just uh, a specialized version for rotation. For example, you can control the variance of um, all axes if you disable this Z only option, then they are rotating for X, Y, Z axis 360 degrees. You can change the seed of it. But in this case, obviously, this is not what we want to have flowers growing downwards. So I'm going to set Z only so that they are only rotating on the Z axis. You can also add some extra X, Y variations so that they are tilted a little bit more to have some um, different growing directions uh, compared to uh, previous uh, setup, whatever stuff. Okay, so these are uh, the good parts of having these two nodes compared to the original random value node. Today's topic, however, is to talk about the performance when you're instancing uh, geometries in Blender. Imagine you're making a kind of grasslands and you need a billions of flowers in geometry nodes. The geometry itself can be very fast, like less than one millisecond. But uh, the models are there and you are rendering with all these kind of lights and shadows. Sometimes it's not only heavy for uh, your final render, but it's also very important to have a nice performance when you're navigating in the viewport. Okay, so there are several important parts of it. One part is point distribute nodes. Uh, it's basically built upon the distribute points on face node. But as you can see, the kind of difference is that one is using the density option and the other is using the amount. It creates a kind of a very huge difference. For example, uh, if you distribute points on face, and let's decrease the size of this grid, you can see the amount of my points actually decreases. So right now, maybe I have less than like 40 points, I guess. And by increase the size of my grid, the amount of my points actually increases. So there can be a moment that you have a very huge density 
deploy small mesh and your client asks you to make the thing bigger. So you increase the grid a little bit more and you find your computer exploded with billions of points, then you screw it. So in this kind of case, uh, point distributed node is a little bit better because it's always a static with a set amount. It's not a 100% accurate, uh, but the final result should be similar. So that if you set 1000 points, there should be 1000 points instead of 1 billion points. Okay. There is also another important aspect when you're working with the amount of instances. Here, let's take a, a subdivision surface modifier as an example. When looking at uh, the settings of subdivision surface, you can see there's a levels for viewport and there is also a levels for render. So this makes sure that you are working with low poly version in the viewport and you are having a high poly version in the render. So it basically speeds up the performance when you're working in the viewport and the only cost of performance when you're hitting this render button. However, when looking at a similar kind of design uh, in ge geometry nodes, whether it's subdivision surface or subdivide mesh, you can see you do not have two settings, you only have one settings. So where are the options go? It basically turns out to be a separate node called is a viewport. So when you are working with the viewport, it outputs yes. When you're hitting this final render button, then it outputs no. And you can turn this into a switch. Whether you're switching the geometry, integer, boolean, whatever stuff, it does not really matter, but the DC is basically the function of it. So here we can use the integer version to set the amount of our point that distributes. So I have these many flowers and let's decrease the size of the grids a little bit because I do not want to explode my computer in this tutorial. And when it's a viewport, it's yes. So I only need maybe 15 flowers, but in final render, let's make that to uh, 100. So basically here in the viewport, I basically have no flowers or whatever, but when I'm hitting this render button, uh, let's increase the light. Let's add a light, maybe expose that to five and hit a render. So I see my flowers, which is nice. And then I'm hitting this render button. You can see there are more flowers than what I actually see uh, in this viewport. This is the magic for our uh, is viewport node. Although this is a pretty simple setup, but I made that into a preset called it is uh, called a uh, uh, render switch. Yes, viewport render count. And I have the integers plug into that. And if your render is 100, and you can set the viewport as a 15, so that it's easier to understand compared to this true or false if you do not understand that correctly. And another important part is that you can render the viewport if you want, or you can preview the render just hitting this switch. But of course, sometimes you hit billions in your render and you preview the render, it may explode your computer. So be just be aware with this kind of differences and so on. Okay. Another important part is that you want to instance where you are looking at. For example, if I have a large grid, then my plants are basically instanced everywhere. But uh, my camera is only watching this amount of places. Okay. So how can I make sure that uh, the other places on not having all these kind of instances. So this is another preset called is inside view. And if you plug that into the selection, you can see uh, other instances are disappearing. 
and uh, all my amounts has been collected into this view box. There are some parts which is not being instanced. This is because my view extension is not uh, far enough. The principle of this is inside the view node. It's basically that I'm generating a view box for my camera. So this box is very nice. It's fitting the camera perfectly. And inside this box, it means your geometry is being seen. Basically, this is the idea. And inside of that is basically a recast node. So that you can determine whether this is hit, whether the hit normal is inside or outside. These are kind of uh, out of scope of today's tutorial. So basically, this is it. Next, let's briefly talk about uh, some of its settings. Previously, I've already mentioned this uh, view extension. It basically just determines how far your camera look at. So sometimes your camera is not far enough to cover my grids in that part. Then you have to increase the extension to make it a cover. Okay. And there's auto resolution X and Y that you have to determine for a project. But what's really important for a camera is its focal lens. You have to determine your camera's focal lens for this node. Otherwise, it will change its box and it's not fitting. So when the focal lens is 20, you can see this box is much larger. And you have to change that to make it fit. And another important thing is there's a thing in camera called a sensor. I don't know if you ever change this parameter. I never do that. I just keep that as a 36 millimeter. But it's actually critical to your box as well. So you can change the size of it and you can see it's also changing this box. So it's hidden in the additional settings. You can also use custom cameras, but that's usually not very important, whatever. Okay. And so on and so forth. And there's another function called overscan. Overscan is basically a concept in the EV as well, where you can see all this kind of film. It basically mentions how much larger of an area for your render goes. And in this case, if we just look at this uh, example of flowers, you can see by increasing these over scans, like 5, 15, uh, 255. Let's make that into 100. You can see much larger area of boxes are being covered. And then we can decrease that, decrease that, to make it closer to the actual box you're looking at. Uh, this is in case your camera is actually going around, shaking, or whatever stuff. Okay. And uh, this is not just for this selection, because you can also go the other ways about how you instance that, so that you can uh, change your views accordingly. Okay. So you can try to tweak all these kind of values and the parameters. At last, I want to discuss a preset which is not being used at all. Um, but I've built that in the past for whatever reason. So it's called bounding box preview. It basically turns all the sound instances to its bounding box. So you will only see all these kind of bounding box without the actual geometry. And it's a default, it's by default off at render. So when you render the animation, it will be the normal grasses or whatever stuff. Okay. And you can turn off so that you are previewing the real geometry. And now this is basically it. But this preset has not been used in my actual work. There either is inside the view or this uh, viewport render path along with all other methods. 
But basically, this is it. I hope I covered everything which is important. Uh, and I hope this tutorial is useful for you, even if probably not many people are watching this channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.